when you talk about how to make money work for you, people think about like real estate or I, I think a lot of people think that's out of reach. So as a normal person who doesn't have anything, what are the ways to get started? Yeah, I would say that there is a huge misconception that you have to have a lot of money to start investing. That's not true. I joke that if you are a single person, being an investor is how you get to be a two-income household as one person. So you go to your job, you do your job, whether it's a W-2 job or a 1099 freelance job, you do labor, you do a thing, and you get money. Then what you can do is take some of that money that you got from doing that thing and then put it towards investing. If you are interested in, you know, just more traditional things like stocks and bonds, that's easy enough. Um, You can do that through a brokerage. But if you want to invest in other things like real estate, but feel like it's out of reach, like there are other tools like REITs, R-E-I-T, REITs, that allow you to invest in real estate without having to buy an actual physical building in the ground that you have to then manage or have a person property manage. There are ways to invest that don't require extra time or effort from you. Investing should actually be really slow and lazy and kind of boring. But think about your income as a pie graph. As you're starting out investing, most of that pie graph, most of that circle is red because those are dollars from labor. Those are red dollars. And only a tiny sliver are dollars from your money, money earning you interest, money earning you dividends, earning you capital gains. And there's a tiny sliver of blue. But over time, as you make more money and you invest more money, that blue sliver gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And you can actually ratchet back how much money you're making from labor because the blue is getting so much more of that pie. And that way, over time, you can kick up your feet and have a lemonade while your money is still earning enough money for you to live your life. Yeah, that's the retirement plan, right? Is to have your money keep making money. It's not just about saving this amount of money. It's about like investing it. Yeah, I hate to say this, but you can't save your way to rich anymore. In our parents and more so even grandparents' generation, you could save your way to rich. And by that, I mean a family of four with a single income household could buy a white picket fence home, have their golden retriever, go on two vacations a year and still have money to retire. I'm so sorry, but education costs have 10 x mm-hmm. Housing, depending on where you live, has 3X to 10X in the past 50 years alone. And guess what? Wages have stagnated. So to make the math math, <laughs> you need to be investing because your money yeah. can't just sit there and be eaten away by inflation. Through investing, you are able to put your money to work. That way you actually have a chance at retirement. Yeah. I feel like the younger generations feel so hopeless because inflation is just so bad and it's like a problem that's not going to get any better. And it's we just have it so much harder than previous generations. So do you have any additional tips or things that we should know to 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 be investing well and to, I don't know, just to be doing the right things? Yeah. I would say don't get caught up in the hype and don't get caught up in the short term. So I think people will see, oh, my cousin's cousin uh, bought Dogecoin back in the day and now he's a millionaire. It's like sick. For every you know amazing success story you hear like that, every trade has a winner or loser. For that person to have made that much money, an equal number of people or an and equal number that. of dollars had to have been lost from other people. You have to remember that. And a lot of those really, really like hot, hot boy, hot girl investments for the moment, like a GameStop or an AMC or Tesla calls or a Bitcoin, like they're incredibly volatile. There may be a handful of winners. There's a lot more losers. And in the short term, I think people are like, okay, like how can I get my investment to quadruple quintillion times itself in four days? It's like, that's not happening. I hate to tell you that. Not with anything that's, you know, a normal amount of risk. When you start investing, the worst thing you can do is check every day, check your account every day. Mm -hmm. Because I know people who are like, I I just invested, Vivian, you told me to invest and now I'm down $50. Like, what do I do? And I'm like, you chill, you chill out, you go have a candy bar, go watch TV, check back in on this account in a month. See where it's at then. 
put some more money in, check back in again in a month. It's okay to check, but don't be checking every day because if yeah. you're watching every single tick, it's going to be horrible for your emotional health. And frankly, it doesn't matter if you lose money in the short term for a couple of weeks, even a couple of months. Over time, there are very few chances of you losing money if you are invested in a diversified portfolio that tracks the broader market. How often are you investing? Do you do it like on a monthly basis? And, and how often do you check it? <laughs> Yeah, I have an auto withdrawal or like an auto setup so that I'm just continuing to invest even as I sleep. I never, ever have to like manually log into the portal and do it. And then I actually get a statement every single month that I look through. And I don't, like, I don't even need to like log into the account. They email me the statement and I just look and I'm like, okay, this is doing well. This is not doing so well, but you know, whatever. Okay, move it along. And I think that's a healthy amount. You want to be in tune with what's going on but you don't want to be so tied to your investments that every single swing is giving you like a heart attack. 